So 2023 was officially the warmest year on record, but it's how warm that makes it truly significant. Take a look at temperatures decade to decade, a subtle warming trend becoming abundantly clear by the 1990s, continuing through this decade. But look at 2023, the second half, head and shoulders above any previous year. Not that the entire year wasn't really warm compared to what's called the pre-industrial average, before greenhouse gases really started to accumulate in the atmosphere. The average of all temperatures across the globe on each day in 2023 was at least a degree warmer than in Victorian times. Half, well, one and a half degrees warmer, and a couple over in November, a full two degrees above industrial. The first time global averages crossed that threshold. Why? Well, it's almost entirely due to the increase of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. But the temperatures in the latter half of 2023 also got a boost from the natural El Nino cycle. You can see it here, warm water welling up off the coast of South America, adding extra heat to the system. But it's not all El Nino. We had crazy ocean heat waves in the North Atlantic and Mediterranean. And that's not to ignore the coldest place on Earth, sea ice concentration in the Antarctic, here in white and blue, fell to record lows too compared to the 30-year average, shown here by the purple dotted line. 2023, with heat waves, wildfires and floods, took us temporarily into the territory of one and a half degrees of warming, the limit defined by the Paris Agreement. It's a preview of what we'll see when temperatures permanently breach that limit and exceed it if we don't act fast. We really have to stop burning fossil fuels and quickly because um, already a one and a half or even a one and a half degree world is difficult for our societies to deal with. And we're not on track for one and a half degrees. The policies currently in place get us somewhere closer, much closer to three degrees. And that is not something that this world and our societies are constructed to be able to withstand. Even if we doubled our efforts to cut emissions starting tomorrow, we'd still overshoot one and a half degrees of warming. But it's still possible to reduce them enough to avoid exceeding that threshold permanently and then even reverse the trend. But it's going to take a serious shift in attitude.